Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to discuss the load and resistance factor design method of designing a reinforced concrete beam based on e-structural design DAO found on the App Store. Get the factor design load of beam, whether uniform load only or combination of uniform and concentrated loads. Uniform loads consist of self-weight of beam and load from floor slab, while concentrated loads can be evaluated through beam analysis. Check deflection control from the given ACI table. Enumerate input parameters required. Name of beam like B1, G1, CB1. Type of support, width of beam, depth of beam, length of beam, main bars with size and grade, stirrup bars with size and grade, strength of concrete, and design loads, which includes uniform load and concentrated load. Use the moment formula based on the support type. Solve the moment from concentrated load, if any, and get the total maximum design moment from uniform load and concentrated load. Check the reinforcement type of beam, whether singly or doubly reinforced, by first getting the row max, then the RN max, and finally the maximum moment for given section MU max. For singly reinforced beam, get the concrete beam design ratio RN, then follow the reinforcement ratio raw, and check against raw minimum from ACI requirement. After solving for raw, we can get the area of steel and its equivalent number of bars for our tension bars and compression bars. For doubly reinforced beam design, first get the maximum nominal moment from the given section, then subtract it to the nominal design moment to get the additional moment required. Then solve the maximum height of neutral axis Cmax to get the maximum depth of effective compression block Amax. To solve for tension bars, first get the area of steel from the given section, AS1, then the area of steel from the additional moment required, AS2, sum them up to get the total area of steel, AS, and solve for the number of bars. For compression bars, solve for stress in compression steel reinforcement, then choose smaller between FS' prime and FY, and solve for the area of compression steel and its equivalent number of bars. Solve the maximum shear force from dead load shear force and live load shear force. Test for shear strength by getting the shear force from nominal load and compare it to the shear strength capacity of concrete. If Vn greater than Vc, additional shear force capacity in stirrup Vs is required and should be less than Vs max. For evaluation of stirrup design, case 1 is where the design shear strength is less than the shear strength capacity of concrete. Therefore, follow the slide for spacing of stirrups. We use case 2 when the design shear strength is greater than the shear strength capacity of concrete and the initial spacing from web strength is greater than maximum spacing of stirrup. Refer to current slide for spacing of stirrups. We use case 3 when the design shear strength is greater than shear strength capacity of concrete and the initial spacing from web strength is less than maximum spacing of stirrup. For group 1, use single 2 inches as initial spacing away from face of support. For group 2, iterate the web strength procedure until the spacing of stirrup is greater than or equal to 6 inches. Use that number of iteration for 4 inches spacing. For group 3, continue to check for web strength until the spacing of stirrups is greater than or equal to maximum stirrup spacing. Use the number of iteration for 6 inches spacing. For group 4, as a final check of web strength, be sure that the spacing of stirrups is greater than maximum stirrup spacing and designate that as rest at maximum spacing. Stiffener bar guide for different sizes of main bars used for design. Design recommendation format as follows. Simple beam, design criteria, beam size, main bars includes support and center section, stirrups, cantilever beam, same as simple beam but without the center section. Thank you for watching. If you find this new lecture series helpful, please like, 
share, and subscribe to this channel.